Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the first Sheffield DM of 2021. Uh, it's been a bit of a while since we last saw you. Our last event was the All Day Virtual Conference back in August, and since then, the team and I have been really hard at work preparing to bring Sheffield DM back with a bang this year. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Giorgio, Head of Marketing at Evoluted, who are the organisers and main sponsors of Sheffield DM. If this is your first time at Sheffield DM, welcome and thank you very much for joining us. We started Sheffield DM around two years ago as a way to bring together the marketing community in Sheffield to share knowledge, socialise and get the opportunity to basically nerd out with other like-minded folk. Since moving online, we naturally have the opportunity to reach a much wider audience uh, and we're really excited about all the future opportunities that that brings for us. Um, which in itself is a perfect segue to introduce this new event format. Once a fortnight on a Thursday lunchtime, we're going to be bringing you bite-sized snacks of marketing know-how from some brilliant marketers across the whole spectrum of digital and with a wide variety of backgrounds. These half-hour kind of quick 30-minute jollies are perfect to stick on in the background of your lunch break, hopefully breaking up the monotony of staring at the same four walls like we've all been doing for the last year. Um, I know I'm getting a little bit sick of it, so it's really nice to do something a little bit different. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is shut up and get on with it and introduce you to our speaker for today. James Marriott is a podcast and media strategist who runs his own business, specializing in working with brands to develop their podcast and audio strategies. Along with editing, production and other services, he also freelances for various radio stations around Yorkshire and the Northeast. And as a journalist and newsreader, having worked full time in radio until a couple of years ago. So let's bring in James. How are you doing? Yeah, all right. There's no, no pressure there with that introduction. You made it sound like I know what I'm talking about there. Well, I hope so. I'm really excited for today's session. Um, podcasting and audio is something that I'm really keen to learn a bit more about. There's a lot going on at the moment with the likes of Clubhouse all over marketing Twitter. Um, I'm sure plenty of people in the chat here today are going to be uh, on that as well. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to it. Um, for all of you in the chat, if you do have any questions for James, chuck them in the live chat on YouTube um, and we'll uh, we'll get stuck into them afterwards. So I've waffled enough. James, I'm going to hand it over to you and uh, let you get kicked off. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, so, yes, hello, everyone. I am James Marriott and I'm a podcast strategist. Or, as it's better known, um, I work for myself, therefore I can give myself whatever job title I want. Uh, now, I will explain um, a little bit more about what that means in uh, a minute or two. Um, today, then, the uh, first of these new shorter-form Sheffield DM events. And it feels like everything is going short-form in 2021, isn't it? Even, even webinars now. So we're looking at the subject of audio strategy. What it is, why you need one, what actually goes in it. And spoiler alert, um, a big part of it does revolve around podcasting, so we'll be touching on that in a bit more depth as well later on. So first up then, who the heck am I and uh, what qualifies me to stand here and preach to you about audio? <clears throat> I, did my, uh, I did my first radio show back in 1995, and um, let's just say I was a teenager back then. Unfortunately, I do have photographic proof. This is, uh, this is me in a radio studio back in the uh, 90s um, doing, uh, yeah, it was one of my first radio shows. And um, funny thing about this picture, I dug it out of a bottom of a cupboard to uh, scan to use as part of the presentation today. And it was just sat on the edge of my desk. And a couple of times I kind of saw things on the picture and thought, oh, what's that? I actually tried to pinch and zoom in on the actual photograph a couple of times, which is uh, is very 21st century, isn't it? So yeah, um, my first proper full-time job was actually in print journalism at a newspaper when I was 18 years old. Um, and this is my first ever front page story with my byline on it. Um, I did that job for four years and to be fair, I absolutely loved it. But I always knew that audio was my calling. In actual fact, when I was working at the newspaper, I was um, contractually barred from appearing on the radio. So I actually used to do secret radio shows under the fake name of Jimmy Stickshift. 
and that, my friends, is a true story. Um, 2003, I moved into radio full-time, firstly working as a journalist or newsreader, then I went into presenting, and then moved into management, and I ran the output of a regional hub of four radio stations for the best part of a decade up to the summer of 2018. Uh, right, this is a much more up-to-date and less embarrassing um, photograph of me. Somewhere in amongst all that, I discovered podcasting. Firstly, it was kind of as a bit of a passion project, something that was a bit of fun. And then it kind of came a bit, a bit more. And long story short, the last 18 months or so, I have been self-employed as a podcast strategist. And what that means is that I work with businesses, brands, and individuals on helping them to create a really good podcast is the best way of summing it up. Um, tends to be people right at the beginning of their podcast journey who want to create something that is of a certain level, but I also do work with existing podcasters as well um, and do some editing and production work and some voiceover work. And I haven't forgotten about radio either. So um, these are some of the radio stations that you can hear me on. Uh, the majority of radio work that I do at the moment um, is for Heart and Capital in Yorkshire and the Northeast. Also some work at Smooth Radio in the Northeast as well, um, reading news bulletins across those stations. BBC Radio Sheffield, I um, also do a bit of work for Hallam FM, Greatest Hits Radio, and a few other radio stations kind of scattered across um, the North as well. Um, incidentally, my uh, business name up until um, quite recently has been um, J Media. Um, I've kind of stopped using that now just ahead of um, a bit of a rename, rebrand, relaunch which isn't quite ready yet, so I can't really tell you anything about it. Um, but, I mean, you know, we're friends now, so you can just call me James if that's, uh, if that's all right. Sum all that up, really, audio has, well, pretty much been my entire life. Um, so I am giddy as a kipper that the rest of the world has cottoned on and is going audio crazy in 2021. And it really is, isn't it? So here's a question for you. Do you recognize this? Um, if you are an Android user, it probably doesn't mean anything to you. But this is the app icon for Clubhouse. It's a slightly odd app icon all things considered, I kind of wonder whether or not they used it to try and go a little bit under the radar, and it obviously hasn't uh, worked. So Clubhouse, it passed 2 million users this week, valuation at the moment of a billion dollars. Um, social audio is the um, definition, apparently. Basically, people host rooms where you can go along and listen in, or you can join in, or you can host your own room. It's all audio-based. There's no video or anything like that. It is still invite only and it's ios only um but it is something that's quite unique in that everything is live so it's it's really really topical and reactive and of course it's very interactive as well um it is a little bit messy and you know i'm not going to lie it doesn't feel all that intuitive at the moment and actually it is a little bit scary until you kind of get to grips with how it works um, a lot of the rooms as well, you'll, you'll kind of go in, there'll be someone talking away and then they finish talking and 20 people all talk over each other at exactly the same time. So, you know, it, it's not perfect, but I'm sure there are um, uh, plenty of those things that are on their roadmap. Um, what about this? Probably less likely that this will mean anything to you. So this is uh, the user interface for Twitter Spaces, um, which is actually very similar to Clubhouse, which is something that Twitter are testing at the moment. It's much more under wraps than Clubhouse. Um, you have to be invited by Twitter to actually um, join their testing of this. Very similar thing whereby people host a space, which is very similar to a room in Clubhouse, and you can uh, you can listen in or you can talk um, and you can join in conversations on Twitter um, spaces. 
So look, Clubhouse may end up coming and going. Um, you know, Twitter spaces may be something that sticks around. It might not, but we are on a path right now and audio is definitely in. It is cool. Um, and podcasting is flying as well. Now it did in 2020 and I reckon it will do so even more in 2021. So let's have a look back then at last year in podcasting. Here are um, some stats that were released just yesterday actually by Chartable. So so you can see their podcast ad revenue was up in actually what was a very difficult year for all forms of media. Um, downloads more than doubled, um, 160 new advertisers on um, podcasts every week, and 17,000 new podcasts every week as well. So over the course of the year, that's nearly 900,000 new podcasts that started last year. So where does that bring us right now then in podcasting? Well, we've got over 15 million active podcast listeners in the UK. In the States, it's over 60 million. We're now at over 1.75 million podcasts worldwide. And actually, if we just bear in mind the fact that nearly 900,000 of those started last year, you can see just how big the growth in podcasting last year was. And there are over 43 million different podcast episodes out there in the world right now. Um, and actually, uh, just last week, um, Fox News over in America did uh, a big thing about podcasting. And you can see there they were talking about between five and ten billion dollars of growth they're predicting for podcasting as people um, also do video versions of their podcast. So audio really is booming and it's it's no surprise, you know, it is still the warmest and most intimate form of communication that there is. But you're probably wondering what this actually means for you. Well, all right, let's have a look at how many of these things you are already doing or maybe you're thinking about doing. Audio within social media, that's quite a wide ranging kind of description, but anything that you do on social media that involves some form of audio. Podcasting, as I said, we'll talk a bit more uh, in depth about that a little bit later on. Video content, this is very closely related, obviously, to the first of these points because so much video content is through social media, but might also relate to uh, YouTube if you kind of differentiate between social media and YouTube, but also might be your own video content on your own website as well. Um, just on the subject of video content on um, social media, media. So I, I hear kind of a lot of people when I'm having these sort of conversations that quote stats at me about the number of people that consume video content on social media with the sound off. And I'm sure we've all seen the reports. It ranges from, I think it's 63% up to 80%, depending which report you believe, uh, of people that um, watch video content on social media with the sound switched off. And that for me is completely missing the point because um, what about, you know, if it's 80% of people who uh, are watching your video content with the sound off, what about those 20% who are so engaged with your content, they're so interested in it that they decide to switch the sound on, you know, they're, they're yours for the, for the taking. So, you know, the, 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 how good that, that sound is, how good the audio is on your video is really, really important. Um, and I've included audiobooks here as well. So you've know, probably noticed over the last few years this trend for more and more brands producing their own ebooks. And I think we will see more and more producing audiobooks as well, whether that's something that they release publicly or whether it's something that's used as like a lead magnet through their website. And all these things have one thing in common, and that thing is audio. So alas, we arrive at this phrase, audio strategy. Uh, I'm sure you're all thinking, yes, James, what I want right now is another strategy to do, more reports, more documents to write. Well, the good news is that an audio strategy isn't anything like as weighty as a, as a marketing plan or as a, ban a brand strategy. And some of it, in fact, quite a lot of it will be stuff that you already have or stuff that you've already thought about before. But some of it maybe isn't. So let's have a look at what is actually in an audio strategy. 
and this is quite I'm, I'm looking at quite a basic version of this because obviously we've only got 20 minutes so first thing what audio you create and this basically relates us back to the slide that we were just looking at so at the moment how many of those are things that you create do you host a podcast if not, you will get a bit of a telling off from me later on. Just going to warn you on that. Have you hosted a club a clubhouse room yet? Have you even thought about it? Um, in fact, arguably, clubhouse maybe warrants a kind of a mini strategy of its own about how you interact with other people's rooms and how you tackle your own content. And actually, you might think, well, is it worth it? Is clubhouse going to stick around? Well, I'll touch back on that in, in a moment or two. What you sound like. Now, I'm going to go into a little bit more depth on that in a second. So we'll just hold that one for now. Repurposing. Remember, a lot of what we're talking about here is is actually content marketing. And, you know, chances are with the uh, the audience that we've got today, you're probably all over that. There's a good chance that you're already creating content that can be repurposed into audio form or similarly you might be creating podcast episodes that can be repurposed in video form or even written form, maybe as a blog or, you know, turned into some, you know, fancy quote graphics uh, and images for the socials. But do you actually have a strategy for that? And the other thing is future plans. What does that mean? It's kind of what I just touched on there. We've mentioned Clubhouse and Twitter spaces, and maybe one or both of those will ultimately do really, really well. Maybe they'll be the next house party and they'll vanish into the lockdown abyss. But regardless, they are not going to be the last audio-driven platforms that come along. There will be more, plenty of them, and you can be ready and set to take advantage of them. So while everyone else is kind of fanning around trying to work out what audio content to put out there, you've already got your strategy and you're already cleaning up. We're actually seeing this right now because there are brands who are all over Clubhouse while others are miles behind. And as I say, you might argue that maybe Clubhouse won't stick around, but those brands that are all over Clubhouse will be ready to take advantage of the next platform that comes along if it isn't Clubhouse. So it might be a conscious decision that those brands make, um, or you know maybe they've actually got an audio strategy in place already. Now, I said we were going to focus on one of those, which is what you sound like, because this is really important. So what is your tone of voice? Are you friendly or are you formal as a brand? I'll give you an example here that I always quote, which is innocent smoothies. When you think about them, you know what their tone of voice is. You know, they're a little bit cheeky. They're a little bit edgy. You know, it, it really comes through as to what their what their tone is. Your house style guide. So, you know, do you swear in your content? Are you entertainment first or education first? Are you long form or short form? You probably already have some form of style guide, but actually really audio works a little bit differently. So it is worth having a specific audio style guide. The quality of your audio. Now, I'm not talking about the words here. I'm talking about how they sound. So do you invest in equipment to have the best quality audio possible? Or are you a little bit rough around the edges? How does your sound quality ultimately reflect your brand? And this applies across loads of things because, you know, if I was stood here now doing this presentation about sound quality and maybe I, you know, I've got the internal mic on my MacBook switched on or um, the washing machine was going in the background, you know, you'd be judging me on that and thinking this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. And quite rightly, you know, it's absolutely essential for me for my audio quality to be top notch. Whether I'm doing a, a webinar or actually whether I'm just on a Zoom call with someone, it's really important because it's the cornerstone of my brand. Um, and audio identity. Now, this is really important. It's quite a big deal, actually. You could perhaps sum this up maybe as being the music that you hear at the start of a podcast. Now, that is forming an audio identity for that brand. Um, you should probably use it across all your other content as well. So your video content and everything should start with the same sort of audio identity. And the reason it's really, really important is because there's a pretty good chance that it's going to be the first thing about your brand that someone hears. 
first impressions and all that kind of stuff, right? Don't just record something off YouTube and use some, you know, really dodgy, crackly music. There's legal implications for, for, for that as well. And if you, if you need a little bit of help finding the right identity for you, then please do give me a shout. I am happy to help on, um, on that. Now, it might actually be that some kind of sound ident is a direction for you to, to go in and might work for your brand. I'm going to give you a couple of examples here. All right. Now, both those, I would imagine, are brands that you recognize really, really quickly. And, um, you know, that is in what a millisecond or you know, just such a short period of time that, that really illustrates who those brands are. I promised that we would touch on podcasting. This is my bread and butter. I work with podcasters every day. Um, I really specialize in working with businesses, brands, and individuals on creating a podcast from scratch. So this is like the idea of it, the aim of the podcast, the format, the structure, ultimately all that stuff coming together to form uh, a strategy and then working on the actual sound of it. So all the you know, practical stuff like the tech and the publishing platforms and of course promoting it which i think a few of you in this virtual room probably know a thing or two about already um so look you really should be podcasting already and by you i mean your business whether you run your own whether you're a solopreneur or you know maybe it's a micro business or even if you're a, an employee um your business should be doing a podcast and actually you should probably be doing one of your own as well as an individual you know it's kind of the cornerstone of your personal brand um, I do quite a few podcasts myself. I actually recently launched uh, a partnership with Unlimited Magazine, which if you are in Sheffield or the surrounding area, you may well be um, aware of. Um, and we are now producing the Unlimited podcast. First episode of that came out a couple of weeks ago. You can find it by searching on any podcast app. Um, I do a, a weekly football podcast as well, and I actually have two new podcasts planned for my brand relaunch. Again, I can't tell you too much about that, but um, I mean, I very much do believe in practicing what I preach. So the content that I put out in podcast form is really, really important. Now, tragically, I know some of you listening to this will probably, well, I mean, I hope most of you will already be on the podcasting bus, but some of you probably aren't. And you might well be kind of whispering under your breath thinking, oh, why is he saying this? Why do I need to do a podcast? I don't really. Um, so I'm going to play a fun game here of myth busting. So this is based on some of the main reasons that people tell me that they don't do a podcast. So have a listen to this. Yeah, but everyone's doing a podcast now. It's just too overcrowded. So I love this one. I hear it a lot. Everyone's doing a podcast now. It's too overcrowded. As if because other people are doing something and it's working for them, that is some kind of justification to rule out doing it yourself. Of course, it's a myth. If that's true, then, well, we should all delete our social media accounts right now because everyone else does that. There's no point anyone ever opening another business ever again because everyone's already doing that. And someone better tell the inventors that they're not needed anymore because we don't need new stuff inventing because we've already got loads of old stuff. You know, it's the same as anything. Um, there are plenty of people in the podcasting space now. You just need to be good. You just need to do something that's really, really good. And if you do, then, you know, you will make uh, an impact. Uh, all right. What about uh, this one? It takes way too much effort. It's just a time drain. I hear this a lot. Just takes too much effort. It's a bit of a time drain. Well, podcasting is essentially about having conversations. I think it's the most engaged form of communication that there is. It's your chance to have a conversation with dozens, maybe hundreds, maybe even thousands of people who are interested in your brand. They've clicked play on your podcast. They've already said, I'm interested in you. So, you know, you're having conversations with all these people for the time it takes to have one conversation. So I think this is very much a myth. Just think about how many staff you need to employ to have all those conversations in real time. You know, podcasting actually is a time saver. It's not a time drain. Uh, all right, here's another one. It's just too complicated, mate. I wouldn't even know where to start. 
Yeah, there's a lot. It's too complicated. It's too difficult. Sometimes, in fact, I mean, relatively often, I work with people who have previously tried to do a podcast and they've just given up. They've just said it's just too complicated. There's there's too much to do. Um, so is this a myth? Well, I'm not sure, actually, because, look, we've established that you need to do it well. And, yeah, it does take time but it's worth it. So I think it's fair to wonder whether or not it's it's quite complicated and quite difficult. But, you know, why would it not be? You know, th there's real benefits to doing this. So um, actually, maybe what you need to do is just get some help. And, you know, there's people like me who can help you with making sure that you create the right thing or actually do your own research. There's loads of help available out there online. Uh, right. Okay. Now, if you are already doing a podcast, then you're not completely off the hook. <laughs> so um, I want you to ask yourself some questions if you are an existing podcaster. So um, off the back of some of the stuff that we've talked about today, does your podcast reflect your brand? You know, do um, does it reflect how you want your business to come across? Is the sound quality the best that it could be. You know what? We're a year into this pandemic now. So, well, it's not great, but we've got to do it on Zoom. I don't know if that's really good enough anymore. For some podcasts that are maybe passion projects, it is. But you want something that reflects your brand. This might be the first thing that someone hears about your brand. So the sound quality needs to be better than just doing it on Zoom. Is it doing what you want it to do? Um, do you even know what you want it to do? You know, this is where strategy comes into it. And, and look, aiming for a thousand downloads for your podcast episode, that's not a strategy. Having loads of listeners without a strategy is kind of pointless. It's just vanity, really. So yeah, sure, aim for a thousand downloads. But what do you want those people to do? What do you want to do with them? What's the call to action? What is the podcast designed to achieve? You might need to go back a few steps to make sure that you fully understand that. Do you have a plan for the future? Don't just plod along if you're a podcaster. Take the time now to just stop, take a step back, you know, set targets, review things, get other opinions. Um, I do a, an air check session with podcasters where we actually review and listen to your podcast together to a professional kind of radio review standard and set some goals off the back of that. So, you know, do whatever you need to to make sure that you keep improving and striving to be the very best that you can. And does it fit within your audio strategy? Well, if you're going to go away today after this and think, yeah, I need to do an audio strategy, you might find the podcast you're creating right now doesn't quite fit with that anymore. And that's fine. This is the opportunity to kind of review it and have a look. Now, I know I've probably gone quite a bit over there on there on time, so I'm going to leave it at that point. Uh, what I would say is that if you uh, if you do want to get in touch with me, and please do, then um, I am on LinkedIn. If you um, search for me, it is uh, that photograph there. Um, just search for James Marriott. Uh, of course, I'm on Clubhouse at James Marriott if you want to connect there. And on Twitter as well, also at James Marriott. Um, you can find all those links on my link tree. Uh, and actually, if you want to book in to have a chat with me, you can do that through my website, which is my old site because I'm not quite ready with a new one. So j.media slash chat. You can actually book a 30-minute chat straight into my calendar then, whatever about podcasting or, or audio strategy that you uh, that you want to talk about. And thank you very much for listening today. Fabulous. Thanks very much, James. That was uh, that was brilliant. Really enjoyed it. Um, I shall leave your screen up there so everybody can go and hunt you down on their favorite channels should they wish to. Um, I think we have had a couple of questions in the chat for you, if you don't mind answering a couple, if you don't have to shoot. No, that's fine. Brilliant. Um, first one, thanks for the question, Phil. Um, and thank you for the lovely comment about my hat. It's a bit chilly in here. Um, <laughs> Phil says, I, I assume this should be considered as part of a broader content strategy uh, in relation to your comments around uh, repurposing content to use for audio. Um, so, the, so the whole use of each piece of content could be done at least five times. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's probably true. I mean, the, the point here is that generally people's content strategies at the moment tend to skim over the idea of audio. I think um, people will, will have maybe a podcast that's part of their content strategy, and they think that that's the audio part of it taken care of. And what I've been trying to get across today is that there is a little bit more to an audio strategy than just saying, yes, we do a, a podcast. And how you repurpose between those different elements of your content output.
um, is is really really important. So actually, in time, you you may find that an audio strategy it, it just becomes the done thing that that is. Um, that is part of a, a wider content strategy. But I don't think people do that at the moment. And that's why I'm really pushing this idea of, of creating a separate audio strategy because otherwise it gets a little bit forgotten. So in time, you can absolutely incorporate it into you know, other marketing plans, content plans, everything um, everything like that. But, but kind of making sure that you give uh, you know, a fair hearing to audio, I think is really important. Yeah, 100% with you there. Um, we're we're huge proponents of the movement to uh, you know focus on one thing at a time and then find ways to repurpose that. So yeah. Um, yeah, if you are serious about audio, then focus all in on that. Make some amazing stuff and then find a way to uh, to push that out across your other channels. Uh, we've got a couple of other questions. The next one comes from Elliot. Thanks for the question, Elliot. When does audio marketing make sense? Do you think there's some types of businesses which you think it's particularly suited to? Yeah, I mean, I, I would I would kind of argue in some ways that it's suited to every business. And I, I kind of like the challenge of trying to find uh, the right podcast format for for any um for any business really. And you know, I kind of think about, you know, does a does a little country pub benefit from having a podcast? Don't know. Does does a window cleaner benefit from having a podcast? I don't know. You know, there's a couple that maybe don't. But really, you know, it, it's it's an opportunity to talk to your customers. And I, I don't really see why um any business would not want to take advantage of that opportunity um you know you, you people obviously create written content and social media content and, and stuff like that and you know you you're quite limited in what you can say on a social media post and it's quite open to interpretation about the tone of voice that you use and all that kind of stuff you know podcasting and, and, and audio is your opportunity to use your actual words you know you can get across what you want to say exactly as you want to so it's it's a golden opportunity for any brand to be able to talk you know directly to people about you know who they are and what they stand for and finding the right idea is really important you know don't just necessarily think right we're going to do a podcast and we'll interview other people in the same space that might be the right idea but actually it might be something that you know loads of other people already already do so um yeah it, it's just about finding it is about finding that right that right concept that that's going to work for what you want out of doing it um, you know, it, it, it does work really well for certain kinds of, of businesses. Um, it's a it's a great thing. I mentioned earlier about micro businesses, solopreneurs. It's a really good chance to kind of show off the personality of perhaps a newer or younger company or a startup. Um, but we're seeing so many big brands that are doing it as well now that it, it, I don't think that really applies anymore. It's really going right across the the spectrum, really. Um, so, yeah, I, I, as I say, I think I, I reckon that, you know, in some form or other, audio marketing can work for pretty much any business. It might be a little bit of a challenge finding the exact right direction for that, but you know we're not in this game to not have challenges. I agree. I think that there's there's a huge scope to kind of develop and carve out your own niche. Um, even though you know lots of people do think it's saturated, there's there's so much scope for doing different things. And you say I don't know whether um, a small pub owner in the middle of nowhere could do something, but I imagine there's some interesting tales to tell that could make a pretty interesting podcast series. <laughs> <laughs> might, might be some legal implications there. I mean, one, one of the greatest things I, I saw someone do, this is slightly off topic, sorry, James, um, is for their own personal website, they created a series of kind of five or six podcasts that was just them talking about their direction, their career, their journey, almost as a, a an audio version of their about me. Um, so there's, there's scope to do all sorts of interesting things with audio. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and you know, one of the things that, that I often say when I, there's an assumption people when they're thinking about starting something like a podcast that they think all right so it's got to be talking about what's going on in the industry or it has to be interview based i'm like it doesn't it doesn't have to be anything you know it, it can be whatever you want it to be and and you know i always kind of say look you know most businesses have a frequently asked questions section on their website why not you know just start off by doing basically an audio version of those where you talk about that. if people are searching for these if they genuinely are questions that people ask a lot then surely there's going to be an audience there for a podcast that's going into more depth about those things and and you know people who are maybe um you know I don't want to pick on any particular kind of uh, industry, but you know, maybe some people in the in the legal field who say to me, "Oh, yeah, but no one's interested in what I 
do. But the thing is, you know, when you need someone to help you when it comes to uh, creating, I don't know, a, a will or whatever, understanding some part of the law when you need to, if there's a podcast episode that does that for you, that talks you through that thing you need to understand, then you're you're engaged with that with that brand. And you know, when when you realise actually I do need some help, I am going to need to take on a lawyer. You're going to go to them first. So it's it's just about thinking outside the box a little bit about how you can use podcasting for all kinds of different things. I've, I've just been working with. Um, someone in Sheffield actually who um, started their own agency in the middle of um, the first lockdown. And we've been doing a very similar thing to what, what you kind of described there, which was real short form episodes that are not particularly scripted, that are just running through the process of setting up a, an agency and just a really honest kind of, you know, splurge of how it all came together and how it all works. You know, the, the, there aren't really any rules in, in, in podcasting. It's just about creating something that's really good. Yeah, I, I love that idea of uh, some audio FAQs. I can hear everybody else scribbling it down already. <laughs> Let's see who gets there first. Um, one final question uh, for you, James. Um, sorry, there has been a, another one come through as well, if you don't mind. Uh, so the nice first one from uh, Natahub. Thank you for joining us. Might be a silly question. No silly questions. Far away. Uh, but how do you make sound quality good if you're doing a podcast virtually? That's a good question. Yeah, sure. So um, this is something that that you know I, I can I can recommend tools and and platforms and software depending on kind of your specific um, circumstances. So um, without without going into the specifics of what platforms there are available, but there are um, there are a number of platforms that are specifically designed for um, audio recording. So the, you know, if if you connect someone on zoom let's say that let's say that we were connected now on on zoom and i clicked record so my audio sounds fine because i'm at the at this end of the conversation but then i'm very much reliant on my internet connection and your internet connection for how good your sound quality is is ultimately going to be and you know if there's a bit of a dropout or you get that weird sort of stutter that you get on zoom then that's on the recording and, and, and it's just as simple as that there are platforms where you connect in the same sort of way whereby you know you you connect on a voice over ip connection um but actually when i click record at this end it records me but it records you at your end of the conversation on your local machine and then at the end it uploads the audio to me so i get both of us in the best quality that i can get so um you know they, they do involve um a little bit of um a, a bit of investment in terms of you know they are um subscription based and you, you you're not talking about they're not going to break the bank or anything but you get such a higher quality of audio from 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 doing that so i would say you know if, if that's something that you think wow that sounds great and i need to get on that drop me a line and, and you know if we can kind of talk through the kind of podcast that you produce uh, and and also then look at the solution in terms of um the the best platform for you and 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 the they also include video as well so so there are um ways of which you you capture each person's video feed in hd on their machine and it will lose the video to you afterwards so you don't even get that horrible kind of stuttery video where it's freezing or really pixelated you know you get really high quality video so you can create really good video podcast versions as well brilliant thanks james that kind of answers victoria's question as well a little bit i don't know whether you want to dive into this any further um but victoria asked how do i put a podcast onto youtube um do you need to create the video then upload it or is there an easier way well you've got You've got a couple of options, really. It sort of depends on the format of your show. You know, if you've got if you've got several guests, then um, you kind of need a different solution to maybe if it's just you, you know, kind of recording yourself um, while while you're videoing yourself while you're recording your podcast is is, is not as as complicated. Um, but yeah, um, I, I I would say the the easiest way of doing it is to use something like um, Headliner, for example, is a really good tool whereby you can, um, you've got an audio file, you've got a static image, and you can just create a video from that with a waveform that goes over it. You probably see it's the kind of platform that people use to create what we call audiograms, which is a little clip from a, uh, a podcast where you know, it's just a minute or so where you see the waveform moving around on the, on the video, but it's just a static image. So you can actually create a full episode of a podcast like that. Is there any reason for someone to go to YouTube to consume it if, if it looks like that? I don't know. Probably not. I think that's that's repurposing to YouTube kind of for the sake of it. The better thing to do is to use something like one of those platforms that I've talked about before. 
you, you, obviously you can you can record it on Zoom, and it's really a question of whether or not you think that's good enough quality to reflect you and your brand. But uh, uh, those platforms that we touched on earlier, whereby you can capture high quality video feed from from each person, you can then you know edit that together into a, a real kind of proper video version of that podcast. Um, and you know you end up with something that's that's real high quality that then there is a reason for people to want to go to YouTube to watch the video of that it, it's kind of a level up from just standard repurposing you're creating something that that is really good quality that, that ultimately reflects your brand I suppose that also builds into a bit of discoverability for you right if you create a video that you then put on YouTube and you kind of do a bit of YouTube SEO around that and for kind of if especially if it's kind of um, a podcast or an audio, you know, something that's about frequently asked questions, that's about something that people are going to naturally be searching for. You've got that discoverability element of appearing in search results for that too, which just helps get more, more, I would have said eyeballs, but ears on your podcast. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, SEO in, within um, podcast episodes is a really interesting subject right now because we're seeing um, Google kind of testing where um, their, their algorithms um uh, will uh, read the content of a podcast um the uh, the word i'm looking at, i was going to say translate and i don't think that's the right word but i can't think what the word is i'm trying to think of um but yeah you know they basically search the actual audio content of a uh, a pop uh, tran transcribe is the word i was trying to think of so you know they they they're transcribing every podcast episode in the back end and if a podcast episode better matches the search term that you enter on google than uh, a web page it will start in time to show a, a, a suggested podcast episode as as the better solution to your search query and you know if you're also if you've also got stuff on on youtube uh, apple podcasts search within the app is, is working on a similar kind of system now where it's transcribing in the back end so it's a really interesting time to kind of be uh within the audio space in terms of how closely now audio spoken content is is going to be on a par with written content within search results Absolutely. So there you go. If you weren't already sold on podcasting, now it fits into a much wider multi-channel strategy. So everyone's going to run away and start thinking about how can I get my own niche in the podcasting world now? Hope so. Um, brilliant. There's, I don't think there's any more questions for you, James. So thank you once again for an absolutely fabulous talk uh, and for answering so many questions. I know we have run over a little bit. So thank you to everybody who's tuned in and stuck with us today to the end of the stream. Um, our next event is going to be on Thursday, the 18th of February, again at 12.30 till 1 p.m. ish. We'll try and stick to it next time. Uh, we'll be joined by Colette Evans of Picture Perfect Photography, and Colette helps marketing teams to enhance the performance of their digital campaigns with creative and strategic commercial photography. Um, Colette's going to be delivering a talk, uh, sharing a series of key tips on how you can really make your product images pop to garner attention on your site and in your campaigns. So focusing on another element of media in your marketing campaigns, something a little bit different, and it's going to be a great one to tune into. The Eventbrite link will be going live soon uh, after we finish here today, uh, and we'll share it around with you all via Twitter and email not long after, as well as a recording of this session so you can all check back in uh, if you've forgotten anything that James mentioned earlier. Finally, if you've enjoyed Sheffield DM, please follow us on Twitter at Sheffield DM or join our mailing list at sheffielddm.co.uk to get notified about future events. And last of all, if you want to speak at Sheffield DM, we are always looking for exciting new speakers to share their knowledge. You don't have to be an experienced member of the speaking circuit. If you've got something cool in digital marketing that you want to share, get in touch with us. We'll have a chat about your idea and get you scheduled in for one of these sessions. Uh, you can reach out to me on Twitter at Giorgio Casella, or you can get in touch via hello at sheffielddm.co.uk or any of our other social media channels. So thanks again, everybody. Uh, there's 27 of you still with us. Brilliant to have you here. Really, really happy to be back. And we'll see you again next time. Until then, awkward Zoom wave.